Hey everybody, Daryl Bear. I'm going to be talking to you about Bifrost today and Maya Mondays. So what I want to do is show you guys how you can take information that's stored in an Olympic file when you export a meshed piece of geometry out of Bifrost. And in the Olympic options, you, you can tell it to, um, when you do the export, you can tell it to write out information as far as uh, color set information. And the color set information that it's going to write out is velocity and vorticity. So whenever you do an export, um, of a Bifrost object to through Alembic, just make sure that you turn on right color sets and that'll basically send that information out for you. So what I've got is I've got an Alembic cache, like I said, that's already been exported out with that color set information in it. And this is just a simple little uh, splash that I put together for the web page for the launch of 2015. It was like, I don't know, used to show an icon or something like that. So what we're presented with when we pull this up in Viewport 2.0 is that color per vertex information showing up and what we're looking at right now is the velocity and like I said before there's two color sets that are written out one for vorticity which is kind of the churn of the water or the turbulence in the water or um, color set number the first color set which is velocity so what we want to do is we want to get that information obviously into uh, into post so that we can use it to do color correction or add some white caps to maybe where the water's churning a lot or has a lot of vorticity or maybe gray the water take the vert, vert velocity information and use that to drive motion blur so there's lots of reasons why you want to get this data out so if we do a render on this what we're going to get is essentially just the gray Lambert material the default material so the software renderer needs to take that color per vertex information and turn it into an image. So I'm going to walk you through the process of setting that up in Mental Ray. And it's, it's really pretty simple, very straightforward. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assign a new material to this because we don't want any lighting contributions being added into that map or that pass that we're going to, we're going to generate. So we're going to just make a new material that's just a surface shader. So that ignores all the lighting in the scene. And in this surface shader, we're going to map to it a Mental Ray material or a mental ray texture. And the mental ray texture that we want to get is really straightforward. It is mental ray vertex color, right? So now what we've got is we've got this, this piece of geometry that's got color per vertex information and a shader that wants to um, receive that. So we just need to make that connection. And again, this is pretty simple to do. We'll just jump over to our node editor here. And what we got here is we've got that guy and we've got the mesh, right? So the mesh carries the color per vertex information. So if you hit three on this guy and we hit four, because four gives us, three will give us the default list, four gives you the complete list of inputs. So we had to hit four to get to this color per vertex information. So there's, um, you know, color per vertex set zero. That's the first channel that we want to map into that guy. And then if you expand the color sets out and go to color set zero, which is the, um, I think it's the velocity is color set zero, you can see that there's color name. So all we have to do is provide that guy to that guy. You can see that it put in Bifrost velocity. So now if we render this out, what we're going to get is obviously that velocity information in the software render, which is exactly what we want. So really simple, easy, straightforward. Obviously, if you wanted to get the second color set, you would just make that connection in, into, into the shader. So that, that's really it. All you have to do is create the mental ray vertex colors texture and then make the connection of the color vertex information that rides on the shape node into that texture by making the connection for the name to the to the color set and just like that you have your velocity information rendered out as images so the next thing that we want to do is talk about um, the mental or the the material the bifrost shader so the bifrost shader when you create a Bifrost sim, um, it's assigned to the level set so you can render it directly without meshing. You can mesh and render it and have it show up in the viewport, or you could apply that same Bifrost material to an Alembic file, and it will also be able to use that velocity and vorticity information in the shader, whether you know it, the Bifrost system's in there or not. You know, this, there's no really Bifrost in this scene right now. It's just an Alembic file, but we can still use that Bifrost material to shade this the same way we would if it was, you know, like the level set or just the mesh geometry not being an Olympic file. So if you go to the uh, Maya materials and we get this Bifrost liquid and we assign that to this guy, you'll see that on this there is foam remapping information that takes, uh, you know, the range and uses that to generate the foam. 
as well as some diffuse remapping. So it's all the same stuff that you would be using if it was the straight Bifrost um, level set, you know, the voxelized render directly, or the Bifrost mesh geometry without doing an Alembic. Um, the workflow would be the same. In this example, like I said, it's just an Alembic file. And if we render this, what we're going to get um, is not really going to be having that foam model driving it. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Let's jump in here and just give ourselves something to see a little bit better. So with liquids, the environment has a ton to do with it, right? So we'll just speed this up a little bit. All right. So now if we get you know, an angle somewhere like that, whatever, that's fine. Render this guy out. And what we're presented with is liquid with actually no foam in there. And the reason the foam doesn't doesn't come is you need to turn an option on in your render settings to get that color per vertex information to pass into the shader. So this is important. Um, you need to go in here and you need to turn on under options, export vertex color, right? So as soon as we do that, we'll save this image and we'll render it back out. And you will see that now we're getting that foam model kicking in the areas sort of where there's the most uh, kind of white caps would be or the most movement in the material. So really important that you turn that option on or else that shader won't work. So that's one way of, of you know, you could just do it all on camera, right? And use the built-in shaders, foam generator, and, and not do it in post. So another way of getting information out is to use a kind of a hidden node, right? So this is actually really cool. Let's go ahead and clear everything out of here. Let's assign another material to this guy. Just put a blend on there for now. So what we're going to be doing here, and again, we can turn off the display of that color per vertex information in the viewport um, by going to the mesh display. So what Maya is doing here is it's showing me the color per vertex information, even though I've got a shader assigned to it. If you don't want to see that stuff, just turn off display colors on the shape node underneath uh, display mesh. So now we now we see that blend. So what we want to do with this example is extract that information, that velocity and and vorticity information. But instead of having it come out as red, green, and blue for velocity, and um, I want to get it basically just tied into a, a, simp, a simple um, float value, right? So there's a node inside of Maya that allows me to to process that information, and it's it's a hidden node actually. So if you do create node bifrost underscore mix underscore ver vorticity underscore velocities that'll create this this node and this node basically takes that information and allows you to um, extract it right so what we're going to do is we're going to tell it that we want to get velocity information so we'll put that to a value of one so this node is now going to spit out velocity information on whatever material is is assigned to it and what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a kind of little pass system that's going to um, render the material you know like let's say this is this is my water material so I you know I've made this kind of water thing that's sort of transparent or whatever and when this renders I want to I want to basically spawn a second render and have it create another shading network and this render is going to trigger this second shading network and have that basically um, extract out the velocity and vorticity information for me so this is something that you can do inside of Mental Ray. You've always been able to do it inside of Mental Ray is have a you know a, a custom buffer trigger another shader. So you, if you want to have the same scene set up with three shaders and have it render them all at the same time, you can actually do that pretty easily inside of Maya using um, custom buffers. So let's go ahead and look at how we set that up. What we're going to do is we're going to jump over to, uh, to Mental Ray and we're going to go down to miscellaneous and we're going to get a custom color buffer so this is this is the the mechanism that we're basically going to say you know what what's going to trigger this writing of this custom color buffer so we're going to say when the blend material renders it's going to trigger another render which is going to be the input right into this custom color buffer so we're going to pipe into that guy a surface material again because we're trying to get pass information we don't want any lighting or shading in there so for this example we're just going to go up to Maya surface and grab a surface shader. Oh, looks like we have to tell it what to do. So we're going to take the out result 
of that surface shader or out color and we're going to have that drive color for that custom color buffer so what we've got here is we've got this guy so this this is our primary shader it gets rendered the pass system when it renders is going to going to basically go to this custom buffer and it's going to say you know what what's the trigger of that all right well this pixel is being shaded so i also need to calculate not only my first shader or my input shader but i need to also calculate the trigger shader so it's really pretty straightforward so we'll go ahead and We'll create a new pass for this to uh, to write into. So we'll bring up our render settings here and just go to passes. And we'll create a custom color. We'll call it um, Bifrost Data. All right, so we'll create that guy and we'll add it in here. So we've now got this render pass, right? That can receive the information of this new shader. So we just need to tell it wh where is this custom color buffer going to write to? Well, it's going to write to that new Bifrost custom color that we just made. So with that hooked up, what we've got is we've got our surface shader and we need to um, basically send this information into the surface shader. Now this information that's going to come out is going to be a pretty large range. So to visualize it a little bit easier, we're going to normalize that down to a range of zero to one. So we're going to use a utility node inside of Maya to do that. You could use, you know, you could use a multiply node or a set range node. I'm just going to use a color, uh, a color node to do it. So we'll just grab a remap value for that guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit R3 on this and we're going to grab the out value of this guy, and if we hit 3 on this guy, so we're going to grab out value and put that to input value. So that's the value that we're going to remap, and I'm going to put my max range to something like 50. So we're normalizing 0 to 50 down to 0 to 1. You don't have to normalize it if you're going into a, you know, a package that can take float information, and every compositor at this point pretty much does. Um, I'm just normalizing it for visualization purposes in the render view. Um, so you, you, know, you can use this if you want to. You don't have to use that. So then all we have to do is obviously um, take the output of this guy and have it drive our out color, right? So this is pretty straightforward. So now if we render this, what we're going to get, and again, that, um, that vertex right color needs to be on for this to, to work. We get our primary buffer rendered out with our, um, our blend material, pretty straightforward. And if we jump into our path system, you can see there is my information written out in a, in a float value 0 to 1. So really easy to set up, super straightforward. And normally what I do is I'll create, um, I'll put this into a, like I'll put the velocity into a red channel and the vorticity into a green channel. So in one, one shader, I'm carrying both the velocity and vorticity information just piped out to red and green. So it's really, you know, you would duplicate, you duplicate these three, these two nodes. And instead of having this go out color directly to in color, you'd, you'd break it out and go to red, I can show you that real fast, actually. Let's just go ahead and hit three on this guy. So instead of tying it like this, what I would do is I would do something like this. And I would say, you know what? Velocity goes to red. And then I can duplicate that guy and duplicate that guy. And if we hit three on this guy and we hit three on this guy we'll grab the out value again and just shove that to input and we're going to switch this to be instead of velocity we'll put that to zero and we'll put this to vorticity factor up to one and then we'll go over here and just kind of Make this easier for you guys to see. We'll grab that. Hit two and just show our list on that guy. And we'll grab the out color of green and put that to green. 
Oops. Oh, green to green. All right. So now if we render this out, what we're going to get is um, something that's a little bit different. So we'll just render that guy. So Camtasia is not happy with my system performance. <laughs> All right. So now if we look at the pass for this guy, you know, in your channels, you've got vorticity information or velocity information there and then um, vorticity information there. And then you could obviously use those set ranges to kind of get that value into where you want. But it just creates a little kind of um, utility pass. And I often will shove things into red, green, and blue and alpha channels specifically on surface shaders to, to have that one shader or that one kind of right to the buffer carry, you know, four different channels of information. So it's a pretty, pretty standard workflow there. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys um, can put this into work for you once you get a hold of 2015 and start playing around with Bifrost. It's really awesome. And the ability to extract all this information um, and use in post is, isn't it really a, it's great helps out a lot. So thanks again for watching everybody. I'll talk to you all next Monday.